What's up everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Practical channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. So I don't know if you guys have seen the news. It's not gonna be surprising anyways. I mean, this is something that based on the reveal of the gameplay for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, a lot of us somewhat suspected was more than likely gonna happen. My suspicions on this have been since the very first day we saw this game be unveiled, as well as Gotham Knights. Many of you remember it was a DC fandom event, and apparently what's going on now is that the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has basically been decimated in the sales charts by the other Arkham games and other games that Warner Brothers has basically published. This is not surprising, seeing that there are many things that kind of preceded the uh you know the release of suicide squad kill the justice league now many of my videos i've criticized the story of this game i think that story and the way they treated the suicide the you know the justice league members i didn't necessarily think it was a smart way to go simply because fans enjoy fanfare if you're gonna put the justice league in a game it's very hard for you to celebrate the Suicide Squad and then throw the Justice League in the corner and then somehow expect that fans of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and all of these other characters to somehow resonate with that. Now, the other side of the whole equation is also the writing force. Many of you have been watching and been following this whole conversation about Sweet Baby Inc. and you know so on and so forth. And the reality of the matter is they are also invested in the writing of Suicide Squad as well as, according to their website, Gotham Knights. Now, something that really was distinctive with Gotham Knights, and for many of you who follow this channel for a long time, you know that I rank Gotham Knights as a game from the gameplay perspective, an 8 out of 10. But I made a distinction and I said to me, the story seemed like a 6 out of 10. I remember that review very well. If you want to go back and see my review, I, sp I specifically separated the different aspects of the game because I was like, from a gameplay perspective, especially as somebody who works in gameplay development, I do combat design as a hobby. I was looking at the game and going, yes, whoever the you know designers were, the programmers were, they did a very solid job in designing this combat, especially Robin's combat. But when it came to like the way the story and the narrative actually did flow, there were just a few things that I thought could have basically accentuated the whole game itself that the development and the writing missed out on. And that was basically some things that I saw in the game. Now, I like the very beginning and how they treated Batman. It was at the end and somewhere in the middle where they had, if you've not played uh, you know, Gotham Knights, well, spoiler incoming, where they had Bruce Wayne dancing in a nightclub to distract from the fact that people were closing in on him being Batman. I thought that was a little disrespectful. And then at the end, when, you know, he basically sacrificed himself again, I thought, OK, well, what was the point of that? They could have just easily taken a different route uh, or done something different. And I can explain in this video if you guys even care for that. However, in the Suicide Squad, the disrespect was high. They basically went nuts and pretty much, if you haven't heard, shot Batman in the face. Batman, who is, in my opinion, one of the most brilliant, uh, you know, superhero minds out there. Basically, uh, Sherlock Holmes level of brilliance, in a sense. And many of you, if I've never told you this story, I'll tell it to you. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of Sherlock Holmes, decided back in the 1800s to actually kill Sherlock Holmes in his um, whatever, in his uh, writings. At the time when he actually did that, do you guys know what happened? The fans, the fans, actually, they came to a place where they were very, very, very mad. And there was an uproar at the time. <laughs> now, the crazy thing about this is the outrage was so bad that Sir Arthur Conan Doyle actually had to come had to go back and you know reinstate the character. For those of you who don't know, here is here is the report here. She look at what this says. This question on Google says, What was the public reaction to the death of Sherlock Holmes? It said young men in London wore black armbands in symbolism of their mourning of Sherlock Holmes. In reaction to the unbelievable, shocking death of Holmes, over 20,000 people canceled their subscription to the Strand magazine, and there were rumors that even Queen Victoria was not amused. Even the Queen was like, what the heck? 
human behavior has not necessarily changed when it comes to how people can sometimes lock into the characters that they love. And those of you who say, well, it's a game about the Suicide Squad. It's a, you know, this is exactly how they'll behave. I understand you're looking at it from the Suicide Squad's perspective. But again, it's not easy for you to just kill the protagonist without getting a reaction. You'll get a reaction is basically what's going on. And apparently, do you know what happened? Sir Arthur Conan Doyle reinstated Sherlock Holmes in the in his writings. He literally had to go back and bring back Sherlock Holmes. So this entire conversation and seeing how, you know, fans reacted, because many of you have seen some of my videos where I've said, you know, I don't think fans, you know, really do mean when I don't, I don't think they mean it when they say things like, well, Suicide Squad was bad because of this. Well, in another video game, they'll allow for that video game to do the exact same thing. It, it came down to, for the most part, how they treated the Justice League. I think that was a very big, huge challenge that many people could just not go by. And so for most of them, they kind of just channeled a lot of that, you know, response into all of the little flaws and the things that Suicide Squad did not have coming out of the box while letting games like Helldivers pretty much run free and take everybody's money, even though it had play to win elements inside of it. So that's pretty much how I'm going to go ahead and reduce this whole thing. It's just one of those things where if you're going to take out a protagonist, there are ways to do it. You can see the game on the screen, right? If you've not played this game before, then I can tell you for sure that, you know, there's a way to write a protagonist in a story that really does do fanfare and still be able to take out the protagonist with ease. So these writers that are coming in writing these games, they have no talent. They have no skin in the game. And so they're basically right now exposing themselves as to how weak their writing is. You know, if they continue to do that, because, again, this is a reaction that's not even to the author themselves. This is a reaction to people who didn't necessarily don't know these characters. And so I think right now what's going on, the sales issues that we're seeing is going to continue. We've also seen that many other games or not many other games or some other games that are iconic that are coming out have some of these writing consultants or in their former life, they were writing consultants also involved like Black Panther and even right now the Wonder Woman game. And so the reaction is going to basically now carry over because gamers don't really forget. <laughs> this is a very interesting time in superhero games and in superhero writing. And in seeing the way the sales for Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League has come full circle, I think it's very important right now that those who are creators in the indie space, you create for the fans. Many of you know, or many of you may or may not know, I'm working on my own video game right now, and it is a fan-made game. In fact, I'm looking for ways to bring in, you know, the fan base or the people who appreciate these kinds of stories to come along the journey with me. I'm still trying to figure that out because we're still in, you know, pre-production. We can't really put out much to be able to talk about it in, you know, in more, in more detail. And I think it is more than, at this point, imperative that audiences are brought along in order to get this done. Because many people can write good stories. Like, you know, the, you know many people that, that, that are out there in the, in the indie space can write some really, really good stuff. And what they just need is just to be able to create awareness more than anything else. A lot of these established IPs, I think, right now, they just seem to be, you know, some kind of a prime target for... People who don't necessarily have any skin in the game, who don't necessarily care about them, or maybe that's just where they're able to pretty much go ahead and find a job, or maybe they have friends there, or maybe they have some kind of a strange old, uh, or with this whole ESG thing happening, it possibly, you know, is a, is a, a, an environment that's ripe for them to be able to come in, uh, you know, and do what they want. But at the end of the day, you know, I think, you know, the gamers are going to continue to basically see what it is that they're going to say. I'm a rock steady, you know, uh, loyalist, you know, for the most part. Anyways, I, you know, I gave that game. I said, I'm going to buy this game because Rocksteady gave me four games. But I knew that the gaming community, even all the way back in D the DC fandom event, just from the gameplay itself, I was like, the gaming community might not be too fond of this. And then seeing that Avengers had already come in and for the most part, you know, kind of disappointed its fan base more than anything. But this is a very interesting, you know, place to be in right now as a superhero games fan. And I don't necessarily know, like, <laughs> what direction is going to happen or where we're going to move. I think I know what direction we're going to go. Eventually, the indie scene is going to start popping and vibing in this area. And they're going to start making what I think are some solid, you know, entries in terms of gaming, in terms of, you know, animated series. It's just a matter of time. Just let the awareness continue to flow. Let the, uh, you know... 
let the the tools continue to be made known among them you know uh, the circles of people who do uh, this kind of stuff the creatives out there and you're gonna be seeing some really cool stuff we don't gotta wait for batman i mean batman is still you know batman in a sense but to be very honest man here's what i i always thought i said to myself i said it seems like in the writing room there was probably some contention on how they were gonna treat batman in gotham knights and somewhere somehow there were people who still in a sense had some level of appreciation for the character just old school the joel schumacher uh you know class uh basically the gen x's probably they're the people who kind of like a lot of that feel if you notice gotham and gotham knights is actually designed like uh you know like the schumacher's um batman representation of gotham i don't know if you guys know that and so you can tell that deep down inside there's that kind of old school batman liking that's in there but at the end of the day, it seemed like they probably still were able to hold it down and pretty much not decimate the character. Because, see, at the end of the day, man, Ra's al Ghul at the beginning of this game could have just taken Batman out, literally. But it was more believable because Ra's al Ghul is a formidable enemy, uh, you know, at the end of the day. But again, I think now we see why the, you know, see the motives for Talia to become basically the big bad boss babe that she became uh, in terms of the writing. Now, you know. Talia has always been in the stories. She's always been represented differently. So it's hard with all the representations that have been shown for a lot of the Batman and Batman S characters for them to have done anything new, you know, in regard to this. But then in Suicide Squad, I think that was an utter disrespect to Batman and to the Justice League members. And I know many people disagree, but man, when you are going to disrespect these characters like this, you're going to go broke. I said it in one of my Suicide Squad videos. These writers, if you do not, if you do not take the reins of your writing for your fans, you're going to end up as my neighbor school teacher teaching English. Now, teaching is a commendable job, but they just don't pay us much. And it's not as, you know, it's not, it doesn't really resound and resonate in pop culture. So you're basically going to be sitting and just taking a job where, you know, your skills are needed to educate the young ones coming, you know, along with you. But if you really value these jobs and you make the decisions, man, I say, it's time for y'all to basically, you know, hold on to your writer's room and not let these people go rogue with your IPs just because you want to appease them or whatever it is. Take the reins. Those of you who have the, you know, who have the cojones to do it, do it. Because if not, you're going to end up in the same situation where your games that you work on, everybody in your studio is passionate about, your programmers, your writers, uh, you know, your... Uh, your marketing teams, everybody is wanting for this game to basically do well. However, because somebody comes in and because they have what I think is an agenda, they ruin your game. And now look at where your game sales are. Because at the end of the day, even if some people may have had qualms with the gameplay and all the different elements, I'm sure more would have been able to forgive if fanfare was done in this particular game. But it wasn't. They basically peed, almost peed, on our heroes. What did you expect was going to happen? <laughs> well, I guess the lesson is being learned and more lessons are, are going to be taught. That's one thing about fans. You don't mess with fans. You don't mess with your fans. And to me, I'm not surprised. In fact, I didn't think it was going to be this bad. I thought, okay, there are going to be people that are going to be having issues with the live service side. People are going to be having issues with it being a shooter. But, man, not until we saw that leak at the end. Uh, of what happened i think that really did spur on whoever leaked that thing man they were not happy about it i mean even dude i saw people like destin criticize suicide squad and then say that that marvel spider-man game looked like it was awesome i think what destin was also probably conveying and he didn't want to say it and this is me just assuming so whatever he just didn't like the fact that they treated the, the you know the justice league members wrong that's basically what it is. You just could see that the fandom was oozing from a lot of the journalists that were writing about this stuff. They just couldn't even hold it in at this point. But let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching the video. Appreciate you guys so much. Uh, hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.